Hello everyone, I'm Tings from the Dongsheng Collective, and this is News on China. Let's get to the top stories we've chosen for you this week. China's cabinet announced plans to build a free trade zone in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. The 179 square kilometer free trade zone will be the first in China's northwest border region and the 22nd in the country. It will include the regional capital of Urumqi and Kashi Prefecture and Horgos. Xinjiang sits at the heart of the Eurasian continent. It borders eight countries, including Russia, India, and Pakistan, and connects the region with Central Asia and Europe. This offers Xinjiang massive geographic advantages in accessing the 2.8 billion people in the neighboring countries. The plan encourages cross-border UN trade settlements with partner countries participating in the Belt and Road Initiative. This will focus on bulk commodity trade and overseas project contracting. The Commerce Ministry aims to attract domestic and foreign investment to improve service guarantee mechanisms. It also aims to support eligible foreign-funded enterprises to access preferential development policies, particularly around financial mechanisms like banking and insurance. The free trade zone is expected to extend Xinjiang's industry chain to China's coastal areas. It also aims for more export-oriented, labor-intensive industry trains to migrate to Xinjiang and balance out the concentration in the eastern regions. Despite the U.S.-led sanctions, Xinjiang's foreign trade surged by 51% year-on-year to reach 219 billion yuan in the three quarters of 2023. Its trade with five Central Asian countries grew by 59% to hit 176 billion yuan. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese met with his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping as part of the normalization of relations between the two nations. It has been seven years since an Australian Prime Minister had traveled to China. Xi Jinping stated that China and Australia should follow the trend of the times and build a relationship based on common interests. He also criticized the blocs that seek to destabilize the Asia-Pacific region, although he didn't directly mention AUKUS, a security cooperation bloc formed by Australia, Great Britain and the United States, or the Quad, another group that includes Australia, India, Japan and the United States. Since Albanese came to power in 2022, most of the trade barriers imposed due to the diplomatic disputes back in 2020, which resulted in 13 billion US dollars of losses for Australian exporters, have been lifted. Since the establishment of diplomatic relations in 1972, bilateral trade volume has grown from less than 100 million to 220.9 million dollars in 2022. China has long been Australia's largest trading partner. While relations with Australia appear to calm down for now, tensions between China and the Philippines have escalated, following numerous episodes of tension over recent territorial disputes in the South China Sea. Manila announced its withdrawal from some projects of the Belt and Road Initiative. The Philippine Department of Transportation announced that several infrastructure projects previously financed by China will be completed with Japanese and Western investments. Relations between China and the Philippines, which has been on a positive trajectory in recent years, have deteriorated since Bongbong Marcos assumed the presidency in June 2022. For example, in April of this year, Manila announced an agreement for the installation of four more U.S. bases in the country. The United States now has a total of nine bases in the Philippines. Huawei has just unveiled another innovative product, the 5.5G network. This marks a significant advancement compared to the current 5G networks and serves as a transitional step towards 6G. Also known as 5G Advance, 5.5G promises substantial improvements in industrial automation, autonomous vehicle driving, and other applications. In comparison to conventional 5G, it can be up to 10 times faster. Huawei has been collaborating with the Chinese telecom operators, as well as Saudi telecommunications company from Saudi Arabia and Du from the United Arab Emirates. During the Global Mobile Broadband Forum held in Dubai, Huawei and Du demonstrated their 5G advanced technology. Despite its gradual exclusion from the United States and its allies in Europe and Asia, Huawei remains the leading Chinese provider of telecommunications equipment. China, which boasts the world's largest industrial economy, is significantly ahead in the deployment of 5G. By the end of September, the country had erected more than 3 million base stations and had nearly 740 million 5G users, representing half of the global total, according to the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology. Nokia and Ericsson, on the other hand, companies that are also developing 5.5G technology, will be unable to compete for a substantial portion of the Chinese market. 
China has already established an almost complete supply chain for 5G networks, holding over 40% of global patents, and has successfully completed all technical performance tests for 5.5G. Huawei has already constructed its first industrial production line for this type of network. This week, a government-backed computing laboratory announced its intention to use the new processor developed by Huawei to build what will be likely the world's largest artificial intelligence platform. The platform, named CloudBrain 3, is expected to be launched between late 2024 and early 2025. This month, the Chinese Academy of Science launched PubScholar, a new public academic platform. This platform will provide public access to millions of academic papers, journal articles, dissertations, and patent documents. PubScholar currently has approximately 170 million searchable resources, including around 80 million free full-text academic documents. Previously, the China National Knowledge Infrastructure, or CNKI, popularly known as Zhiwang in China, held a near monopoly with the largest privately owned academic database. Established in 1999, CNKI is regularly facing regulatory challenges in recent years. In early 2022, a Chinese court ruled in favor of a retired professor who sued the platform for unauthorized distribution and for profiting off of over 100 of his academic papers. In December 2022, the platform was fined 87.6 million yuan by Chinese regulators for abusing its market dominance. The fine amounted to 5% of its 2021 domestic revenue. The database was also penalized in October 2023 for illegally collecting users' personal information. PubScholar is run by the National Science Library at the China Academy of Science, and stated goal is to function as a public welfare academic platform that enables greater access for the general public. It also aims to ensure the protection of intellectual property rights and conform to international academic norms and standards. Following the launch, Chinese social media platform Weibo collected a poll to measure public opinion and found that 533 of 800 netizens voted in favor of the new platform. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching our video. Please like, share, and leave us your comments. For more, you can also find all the links to the sources we use in this video in the description below. Follow us on social media at Dongsheng News. And if you want to receive our weekly newsletter in your inbox, you can subscribe at dongshengnews.org. I'll see you next time. 再见!